Applying a heat map to a matrix visual is a great way of directing your attention to the information that's most important. In this video, we'll be looking at how you can turn the default heat map into this heat map here. Okay, so let's crack on. Now, the first thing we need to be really clear about is what is the purpose of the matrix? Okay, what is going to be the purpose? What do you want to communicate to the person that's going to be reading this report or viewing this dashboard? So what we want to be able to do is look at three different aspects. We want to look at the number of work orders which are open and we want to be able to see which department and within that department which discipline has the, the largest number of work orders because ultimately this could drive a decision to go and employ some contract resources or even increase the size of the actual department to allow us to go and liquidate this work. So that's going to be the overall purpose of this particular matrix. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating a matrix and I'm going to add that into here and I'm going to go and add in the department along the columns and I'm going to add the discipline as the rows. Okay, so let's just look at that for just now. And then I'm going to add in this measure here, which is just a count of the work orders. And I'm going to add that in as the values. So this is the, the default template that I've used here. So I'm not going to change anything. And I'm going to go and add on some conditional formatting on the actual work order count here. So let's go to conditional formatting and let's use our background color. And we're just going to go with the default values. Okay, so I really want to compare what the default setup looks like compared to some of the steps that I would recommend to transform this into something that looks a little bit easier to read. So this one here, it's not too bad. We can see that it's certainly drawing attention to the the values that are the highest, which is what we want from this particular um, visualization. However, I think it can be improved upon. So let's start with the basics. First of all, we can see that there's a combination of upper and lower class um, characters here. Now, I want them all to be sentence case. I want them all to be looking like this one here, like this discipline here. So let's go and quickly change that. Okay, so I'm in Power Query Editor and I am going to find locate the department and the discipline. And here they are here. So I'm going to click on each one of these and just hold down control to select two. And I'm going to go to transform and we're going to go to format and then we're going to go to this one here, which is capitalize each word. Okay, so now we can see each of these starts with a capital letter and we don't have that full uppercase, which is um, a little bit more difficult to read. And then we're going to close and apply that. Okay, so we can see now we've got these capitalized letters here. So that's a, that's a good first step. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually go and apply a sort here. So I'm going to go to these dots here. I'm going to go to sort by and I want to sort by work order count. Okay, so you can't sort by or can't use the out the box options. You can't sort by the column but I've sorted it by the the discipline here so we can see that the highest values are at the top there and that's just going to help us to actually um, put some sort of order on on the columns. Next we're going to go and add in a, a comma here. Okay we're going to comma separate these numbers here because they're relevant to the thousands and it just again makes it easier to read. So I've clicked on the measure and we're simply just going to click on the comma button here. Okay now the final thing I'm going to do just to get the basics is to go and change the preset there. Now it's at default just now and I want to go and look at this minimal one. Okay, and that's gonna get rid of the alternating rows there and it just tidies up a little bit and adds a little bit extra padding there. So the next step is to change this blue border here. So I'm gonna to go to grid and I'm gonna to go to border and I'm gonna change that to a lighter gray color just to make it a little bit more subtle. And the next thing is we're gonna go and get rid of these totals for just now. We might add them back in later on, but let's get rid of these for just now. So we'll get rid of these subtotals here and here. And that gives us a little bit of space to work with. Now, in terms of the report page, the other thing I want to do is I want to click on the canvas and we'll get the canvas settings here. And I want to change the canvas background to this light gray color here and make it 0% transparent. Okay, so that is getting the basics right. Um, we can see that we've already there started to get something that looks a little bit tidier. Okay, so let's get into the conditional formatting for the heat map. So I'm going to go in and we're going to choose this value here. And I'm going to go to conditional formatting and background color. Now at the moment, we've got this color range here, which was the default that was added as part of the theme that was on this, this standard report here. So if I go into this highest value here, and if I choose this color, 
and go to more colours, we can see that it's up at this top corner here, which means it's really heavily saturated and it's quite a pure blue. Now, what we want to do is we want to bring it into this area here, which adds a little bit of tone to the colour and makes it a little bit greyer, which is, is easier on the eye. So, rather than change this particular colour here, I'm going to apply a, a new theme as um, one that I, I tend to use. So let's cancel out of here, and I'm going to go to View, and I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to go Browse for Themes, and I'm going to select a theme that I've used in the past. So straight away we can see that the new theme has been applied here. Now let's go in and look at what, how that's impacted our conditional formatting. So we're going to go to Background Colour, and we can see the lowest colour now, rather than being a light blue, is actually white. Now that's exactly what I want. I want the lowest colours to have no conditional formatting. And the highest value here is this um, this dark blue here. So we're on this sort of scale here. So let's go and look at this blue here. And we can see it's heavily shaded. Okay, so it's no longer this pure blue here. It's, he it's a heavily shaded blue. So that's how it... That's more shaded, this is adding more tone, and this is adding a bit of extra tint if it goes up into here. So we want to be in this area here, so that's good. Now, what I am going to do though, is I'm going to add in a middle colour here, just to add a little bit of an extra range, because we've got this, this white colour here, we don't want it to be too much towards the white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in this value here. So let's look at this value here, and we can see, yes, yeah, it's, it's got a little bit of extra tone in a little bit extra shade here so that's great I'm happy with that and um, let's add that in okay so it's changed ever so slightly now the next issue we've got here which is obvious is that these values here and to a lesser extent this value here are, are harder to read because the the text well for this one's impossible to read this is hard this is not the greatest the text is is also dark so let's look at how we can change the text okay so I'm going to go back into the conditional formatting and we're going to choose the font colour here. Okay, so rather than choose a gradient from the font colour, I'm going to actually choose some rules. So I'm going to go to rules. Now if I just move this down here, what we can see is that this percentage here is based on a spread of the values here. Okay, so the lowest value is going to be 0% and the highest value is going to be 100%. Now it's hidden behind here, but I think it's something like 60. 7,000 or whatever. So I want to distribute the colour of the font based on the percentage distribution so that the higher the percentage, the lighter the font's going to be. Okay, so let's start off by putting in this value here. So the first one we're going to do is going to be if it's between 0% and around 5%. Okay, so the really low numbers there. Okay. And I want them to be de-emphasized. So I want them to be a kind of light grey here. So let's choose this one here. Just going to move that back up again. And then we're going to add a new rule here. Okay, so the next one is if it's between... I'll just change that to percentage. If it's between 5%, okay? So that's greater than or equal to 5%. And we'll put it up to around 30%. Then I want it to be the, the colour that it is just now. So this this um, will make it a slightly lighter black colour there. We'll try this one to, to begin with. Okay, so that's going to be between 5% and 30%. And then if it's up at the top, so above 30%, and we'll put it up to 100%. We just need to change that to percentage as well. It's going to be white. Okay, so let's see what this is going to give us. Okay, so now what we've got is what, exactly what I'm looking for. So we've got the values at the top here, so they're the big values, they're the ones we're really interested in, so they are now white. The values that are in the middle, sort of 30%, so about well, 5 to 30%, they are going to be this colour here, and then the values that are really low, I've actually totally de-emphasised those values. Now that's a key thing for, for this particular requirements here, we're only interested in the high values. So Okay, we can go and we can focus in on the lower values, but actually it's these values here that we want to actually understand. Okay, so maintenance here with instrumentation, maintenance with mechanical, maintenance with electrical. In fact, there's a big cluster of maintenance issues here. We've got this one for well operations and safety, and we can see integrity as well um, for the inspection. So these are the ones we're going to be interested in addressing and understanding if we need to 
apply additional resources or what we need to do to actually reduce that number of work orders for that particular department and um, and discipline combination. So next we're going to go and do some, some more formatting and some finishing touches here. So let's go in and first of all I want each one of these to be exactly the same width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for auto size width okay and I'm going to turn that off and then I'm actually going to go and insert a new image with a shape actually it'll be fine. Okay, and I'm going to use this as a ruler. So what I want to do is I want to use this shape here just to identify what the what the largest value is, the widest value is, and I'm just going to align all of the other values to that same size. Okay, so we can see they're all roughly the same width now, so that is fine. So let's get rid of this. And I want to actually add a little bit of extra padding. So let's click on this again. And we'll type in pad, we can see padding, and I think I'll just make that 4, I think it's fine. Yeah, we don't want it to be too big, but we want a little bit of breathing space just above and below these here. But let's see number 5. Yeah, let's do it for 5. Next, I also want to left justify these values here. Okay, we read from left to right, the headings are at the left hand side. So I want this to be, the values to be the same as well. So let's click on here. Let's go in here, and we're going to go to specific column and we're going to go and we're just going to align it to the left okay that's great now we're going to add a title to the chart so let's go to general title switch that on okay work orders by department and discipline and let's start looking at the actual font sizes here so we've got the global font size so let's just reduce that a little bit nine is enough there um, but we also, we want this header here to be slightly smaller, larger because we want to create this hierarchy that says, okay, that's the title and then these are the column headers and then these are the row headers here. Right, great, that's looking a little bit better now. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is this area here, okay, it says discipline. Now that's the actual row here, but there's nothing telling us that this is the department across the top. So we're going to do a little bit of a hack here. So this row here. If we type in discipline and in fact if we start with department, okay, we can see it's got department slash discipline, but we can go a little bit better than that. Now I've done a search for uni unichar arrows and I've come back with this website here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that arrow there and I'm gonna copy it. Okay, so I'm gonna double click in here and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna paste that in here. So department is gonna be added as being along the top and then discipline is going to be a down arrow. So I'm going to find the downwards arrow and I'm going to also copy this and I'm going to paste it in here. Okay, so now we've got the department and an arrow pointing towards which department it is and the discipline and that is along the bottom here. Okay, so the next thing we want to do based on that hierarchy, bold for the the actual chart title, we also want the row and the column headings to be slightly bolder too. So let's go in and we are going to go to column headings and I'm actually going to choose this one here, this semi-bold colour here. Okay, so it's not too bold. If you go too bold, it is just a little bit, a bit, a little bit difficult to read. So just let's go with the semi-bold and I'm going to do the same for the columns, the row headers here. Okay, so it just makes it slightly bolder than the actual numbers here. Then when it comes to the actual visual itself, let's tidy that up a little bit. So we'll go to General, we'll go to Effects. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to add a border. And I'm going to leave the border white. The only reason I really want a border is to just to round off the edges here. Okay, just to make it a little bit smoother. And I'm also going to add in a shadow here. I do like a, a shadow. So let's go to Effects here. Turn the shadow on, but I am going to make it slightly greyer in terms of it's just going to be a, a subtle shadow there. Okay, so that's the the conditional format and done it's updated so that it really does focus the heat map really does focus you on these values here the other values that are important but not as important as these high values here are also highlighted and the lesser values that are there but they're not actually um, necessarily in your face and, and easy to read and that's what we want with this here we want to really focus the attention on the values that really matter Next and finally, I'm going to add back in the totals now you can actually add the totals if it's important and I think 
for this example here, it is important to add in some totals here. So for example, you might want to see what are the instrumentation requirements across all departments or what are, what are the actual work orders across all of the different disciplines for that particular department. So it is important to see that totals there. So let's give ourselves a little bit of space here. And um, we're going to go and I'm going to switch on the subtotals. And I'm going to switch on the subtotals here. Now, I don't particularly like like it to be this this bold here so I'm going to just go and make them less bold so now if we go into the subtotals here we go into the values we can see we've got this bold here and we can take it off so let's do the same for the row subtotals we'll take the bold off of there now what I am going to do just to differentiate from the rest of the actual values in the actual matrix itself is I'm going to make them italic Okay, so just a subtle difference there. Okay, so I also want to apply the italics to the totals here. So I'm going to go to row grand total. We'll start with column grand total actually. And I'm going to italicize that. And then I'm going to apply, click on this button here to apply to labels. Okay, so we can see the totals there. And we'll do the same for the row grand total. Okay, great. So there's a little bit of a differentiation there, but I think one final piece that I can do is I'm actually going to change the actual background colour there to be a subtly different colour. Okay, so let's go into this here, column grand totals, and we're going to go and I'm going to choose one of these colours here, this light colour here. Yeah, this one here. Let's try this one here. Okay, so we'll go to grand total here, and we can see I'm just going to add that in. All right, so finally, I want to put some arrows for the co to, to point our direction, our, our eye in the, the, the direction of the column totals here and the row totals here, or the column totals and row totals. Okay, so the downward arrow is going to go in this one here, which is the column subtotal, and then the other arrow is going to go in the row subtotals. And we'll just put that there. Okay, so it just helps to subtly draw our attention to the columns and the rows totals there. Okay, so that is it now. Hopefully you'll agree that this one here does look a lot clearer and a lot more focused on the, the values that matter. And hopefully you'll agree easier to read than the, the one that was just created with the default values just at that um, Power BI provided as part of the standard template. If you um, enjoyed this video, then it's always appreciated if you could show your appreciation by giving it a like. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, then um, feel free to hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification whenever I release a new video, which tends to be around about every week. Okay, so thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.